IC Festival. My name is Martin Brunsko. I'm uh, so delighted to uh, see you, unfortunately not here in grey Brussels, um, but anyway, online or if you're watching this in the recorded version later. So <clears throat> we're going to start uh, to build on what we have heard in the previous days. So we've talked about local data spaces, what they are and how they come about. We have uh, talked about how complex modeling, so digital twins, uh, are increasingly becoming part of the uh, ecosystem uh, uh, locally, but of course uh, across all levels of governance, if you will. And we have also uh, seen how uh, the organizing around, uh, well, the data, the digital, uh, is becoming increasingly the bottleneck, we can say, or the uh, space uh, of opportunity for uh, improvement in how we make the best of digital technologies for citizens of the world. I'm very delighted to welcome you here um, to this session with uh, Jakob Höfer Larsen. And Jakob, you're welcome to put on your uh, video. Hello and welcome. And you will introduce yourselves in just a moment. And Ray Walsh, um, representing so many things, I can't even list it, but I hope you will do so, uh, Ray. So Jakob, you're joining us from uh, Copenhagen in Denmark and Ray from Dublin in Ireland. And we will also be uh, joined in a moment by uh, Kathy Mulligan, who will provide additional uh, perspective for you guys. But <clears throat> maybe just for the start, I mean, um, Jakob, could you say a few uh, words about yourself? And I will, I will ask Ray to do the same, just to contextualize what we're going to talk about here. So Jakob, uh, just, just a, a few words about uh, your work and, and local government Denmark. Yeah, thank you, Martin. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, as Martin just mentioned, my name is uh, Jakob Puffer Larsen, and I work in uh, local government Denmark, which is the association of the 98 municipalities that we have in Denmark. And I work within the, the field of uh, digitaliz di digitalization and new technologies, where I work in a unit focused on new technologies and digital transformation. So we, uh, we look at new technologies in the municipalities and look at what, what new technologies work and what should we do to, to scale them to the other municipalities. That is what we overall do. Yeah. Okay, so, so this is every, it's not like some of the municipalities, it's the formal organization of every single one, right? A little bad connection, Martin. Okay, is it better now? Yeah, actually. Okay. Yes. So, so it's, it's every municipality, it's not just like a subgroup, it's, it's the formal representation of all of them. It is, yes. Okay. I mean, we had also in the opening yesterday, we had the chair uh, of COIL, uh, the mayor of Aarhus, Jakob Bonsko, who also reflected on a more political level on what do we need. Thank you so much. Ray, so what do you want to highlight in, in your, what, 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 are your, what are your positions uh, in this landscape? What is your vantage point here? Just, I uh, just get the unmute button pressed first. Listen, thanks very much, Martin, for the, yes. for the uh, for the invitation. Um, and uh, yeah, so look, what I what I would probably introduce is is the uh, the Stand ICT project and and some of the European um, uh, influences, shall we say, like in terms of how this sits within the ecosystem. Because you, as you mentioned, you were talking about digital twin and and smart cities and how they are interlinked. And uh, standardization is one of the mechanisms for pushing this in forward forward in terms of internationalization and scaling. Uh, so I'm looking at international standards. I mean, I work, I work uh, with the European Commission in policy and advisory uh, capacity for, for emerging technology areas. And the Standard City Project and the European Observatory, which is the, the logo behind here, uh, they support engagement in, in, in terms of standardization. So people, experts in smart cities and, and digital twins, etc., want to engage at a national level or at a European level. Then there's funding available from the European Commission. So I'll outline you know, what the Standard City project does and, and how you can engage with, with uh, international standardization and get involved you know, and, and, and help uh, put on the national jersey, I suppose, uh, for your country, become an international expert and, and engage on a, on a European and global scale. 
which is to some, to I think most people, especially people in municipalities, much easier said than done. So it's great to be having this conversation because that's exactly how do we close the gap between what's out there in terms of you know specifications, knowledge guides. There's a ton, yeah. And what we need, well, we as citizens, our representatives, the, the civil servants, the market that actually wants to serve uh, this situation, because Absolutely. there is a gap. Absolutely, right? and Martin. Like, and, I, and I think you find that, that that sometimes it's just an information and education exercise, really. That there are there are systems and and organisations and and instruments available, uh, but but it's very very hard to keep track of everything. So it's good like to have um, organize organize sessions like this where we can bring to through the the, the the various people's attention, like the stakeholders' attention. You know, there are supports there, and 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 we can we can help each other to get involved in these areas. I can't wait, and I guess Jakob, that you can subscribe to this uh, situation uh, since you have uh, uh, somehow gotten involved in in you know trying to to understand what's the landscape and then how to translate that into something very practical, very useful, you know, something that uh, makes trash collection better, makes you know ensure that we don't create a George Orwellian uh, nightmare state, and uh, you know live long and prosper all of us. So I'm uh, going to give you the floor, Jakob, and please uh, take over the screen and uh, share uh, your view and uh, looking very much forward uh, to this session. As mentioned, my name is uh, Jakob Pöffer Larsen and I work in, in local government Denmark in a, in a unit where we, where we focus on uh, new technologies and uh, digital transformation. And, um, and, I, and I guess it's interesting to say in, in, in this session that so we, we, we're looking at how do we make technologies work in the Danish municipalities, which, which of course are very different municipalities from, from Copenhagen and Aarhus and Odense, which are very big municipalities to very small municipalities with, like we have small islands that are municipalities with one man working in the IT department. And, and then we're looking at these new technologies and, and, and uh, wondering how do we make these work in the municipalities and in our society. And we have, we have different um, levels where we could set in. So, so uh, as you mentioned, uh, Jakob Bundgaard, Bundgaard has last, uh, when, when he opened it, he talked about the political level where, where we do a lot of things uh, in regard to the government and so on, say so we should do this and this, and, and we try to push on some political levels. And then we do a lot of uh, knowledge sharing between the municipalities. So we, so we do a lot where we, where we have we have uh, every second week we have meetups <clears throat> with the municipalities with uh, at least hundred people every second week, where we talk about a new technology, <clears throat> and then how do they work with this, and then how do the market work with it, and so, and then we just share knowledge between the municipalities and make sure that they know each other, which I guess is a <clears throat> important thing as well. Then we write strategies, and say we should do this and this. And then we um, we also do a lot of uh, education and, and like together with other we, we do some education on IoT or education on uh, automation and so on, and then we do this standardization and architecture, which and I guess all of these levels are a way to push a technology. <clears throat> so I'm today I'm going to talk about um, the big challenges that we look into as as, as a society. And then I'm looking into <clears throat> IoT, which is, uh, I'm the project lead for IoT in, in, in COEL, and, and talk about what are the challenges that the municipalities face in regard to IoT, um, which we have had do some, done some things to, to make, to understand. And, um, and then I will look into um, the Danish uh, guide that we, that we did last year, guide for sustainable uh <laughs> development and then i don't know i can't remember the exact english title but i but i will show it later and then i will at the very end just tell what do we then do to make iot and smart city uh, work in in denmark what is our take on this yeah i guess that, that's what i'm gonna do um <clears throat> so the big challenges that we look into in in the danish society right now are these two things the, the recruitment and the climate. And um, 
in regard to recruitment, uh, there's a huge need of, of, uh, of people within the social areas at the time and welfare, elderly and children. And so we, we simply cannot find people enough to, uh, to work in this area. So we need people to work in the welfare area. There are not enough people right now to do that. That is the, the one huge challenge that we're looking into these days. Uh, it's, it's very, <laughs> now we have that problem. And then we look into the, the climate, of course, uh, as you know, uh, where water is rising and we need to, to bring down this, the CO2 emissions and the air pollution and so on, which is uh, an ongoing problem that we also face. But these are the, the two biggest challenges that we face right now in Denmark and in EU, I guess. And, and <clears throat> just to mention that we then look into new technologies and then see trends like these, like smart buildings and uh, smart home automation, smart maintenance, waste management, of course, also smart. And, and so on, these, these trends are some of the things that we see and hope and work for that, that can help with these big challenges. So <clears throat> that was, that was uh, why we do this. And, and, and uh, then I just want to give an, an status on Internet of Things in the Danish municipalities, um, just to see where are the challenges within this technology that we need to, to find a solution on. And to do that, I will open up for all the technologies that we, we, we look at in, uh, in COIL. We have, uh, we have, this is from 21, where we have, we're looking into 27 different new technologies that are these technologies. These are the technologies that we see that the municipalities use and that we, yeah, that, that in some uh, way are in use in, in the technologies and, and are quite new technologies or are used in the municipalities, sorry. And to work with these, because this is a very, <laughs> to show this slide to a, a political or a, so someone in a municipality who doesn't know technologies, it can be a quite a crazy slide to look at. So what we do is we have this uh, tech radar that I just want to introduce shortly that give a frame to these technologies. And what it does is that um, if we look at this scale down here, it goes from hold, stay by, trial, and ready. So that is uh, the matureness of the technologies. Um, and this is the way we, we categorize the technologies into this uh, frame or this uh, continuum is that we look at the technology readiness, which we does with the, uh, the Danish uh, Technical University. They have like uh, people looking only at the technology in, in a technology readiness level scale and look, is this ready or is it not from, from one to nine, I guess this TRL scale is. And then we look at the distribution in the local governments. So we ask <clears throat> all 98 uh, governments uh, and a lot of people in the governments, do you work with this technology uh, and, and how much do you work with it? So that gives us two numbers that we then uh, put together. And this is the, the thing that, that, that decide where is the technology then placed in the radar. So um, a technology like video that we're using right now is in the very inner circle you see in the very uh, centrum. And uh, so is cloud computing and um, application and um, sensors actually. And then uh, we find IoT here in the trial. Uh, so the whole IoT uh, setup with sensors and network and so on is what we call IoT. And that is put in trial, which means that it's almost ready and the municipality should, uh, should try to use it now and try to look into use cases with it. <clears throat> and of course, IoT is in close connection with other te technologies such as edge computing, machine learning, drones, wearables, sensors, network technology, and, and so on, digital twin. And, and yeah, it's all very much connected. And what we also have here is, um, it's, it's even more data on, on IoT. So this is also some data that we have on IoT that we can uh, create out of the, 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 the when, when we ask the municipalities. So, so we see uh, up here that it's in trial. 
and we see why is it in trial. It's that it's the technology readiness is three out of four, and and we see the distribution in the local governments that says that actually only thirty percent of the governments say that they have it in use, and twenty eight percent of the government says that it has not even been considered, uh, which is. Uh, yeah, I wasn't aware that it wasn't. I thought it would be more in use, actually. <clears throat> and then uh, an important number up, up here in, in the right corner is how relevant is the technology. And that says it's 85% of the municipalities consider the technology as relevant for their task. So that is an interesting number in regard to that it's only in use in 30%. So there's a gap there that, that we, we need to bring down. Um, and then you also see that we have it on the different uh, sub areas, such as environment and climate, health and elderly, school, tourism, and so on. We also ask people there, how is it? And, and as you see, it's in trial in all of these areas as well. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, that was uh, the big challenges. And then some days that we look down and, and the way we work a frame with this tech radar that, that we used to be to get some information about the technologies. And, uh, and now we will, I will tell you a little about what are the biggest challenges when using Internet of Things uh, before I then will tell how do we think we, we, we can uh, um, make a solution to this. So an IoT setup, uh, we have described like this, which is a very simple way to describe what is happening here. We have some sensors, some transmission, and we need to then store data some clean data and make data work together, have an overview of data and sensors and so on, and we need to analyze it, put it on a dashboard in some way. And, and when we have done that, we, have, we, we create value. But if one of these steps are not working, then there is no value. So it's, it's a quite complex technology. Um, and the, the, the biggest, one of the biggest challenges is without doubt the technology in, in, at, 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 at itself is 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 this the setup is quite uh, complex so it's different to use or it's difficult to use different sensors and make them work together at the end that is the, the biggest uh, problem that we see if you have sensors from different companies who uh, who you work or you use in your waste management and so on and then you want to bring down bring the data together and have an overview then then if the if the data is different it's, it's very difficult. So that is, uh, <clears throat> of course, a reason to use standards. And then the, the other big thing that is interesting to mention here is that we, we simply don't <clears throat> have any good and, and done business model. So there are no municipalities who really can say that, yes, we found it. This is really working now in this area. There is a lot of municipalities who say we are almost there and the potential is very big and we, we kind of feel that we have it, but it's very difficult to find a, a business model that is done and, and, and that can be scaled to all other municipalities where we can just say, if you do this, then you create some sort of value. You, you, uh, like, yeah, and then you, you uh, bring down the, the use of money or you, uh, yeah, you, you uh, bring down the CO2 emission or something. It's, it's very difficult to find that. Uh, but we're still looking, <laughs> and then we and I'm and I'm sure it is there in, in a year or two or so. So that is just interesting to mention. And and then we have this uh, wheel. I also want to to show you <clears throat> is that um, we have uh, we use this wheel to understand how technologies are different from each other because there are if you if you use uh, VR glasses then there are some obstacles for that as well, but it's not the same obstacles as for, for uh, implementing IoT. So what is, what is the specific ups, obstacle for IoT? And, and that is uh, something that we have done together with the municipalities as well. So we look at this wheel and then we ask them, what should we be uh, extra uh, focused on when, when using IoT? What, what are the, the, the things that you should look at? And then, then they give them these um, values. So skills is something that you should be very aware of when, when starting to work with IoT, because there are a lot of different skills you need to use or have 
so technical skills, but also all other kind of skills in the organization. So that is something that you need to think about starting working with IoT. Then the organization and change management is important because they say that if you really want to create value with IoT, then you really have to change a lot of things in the organization and how you work. So it's very important that, that the leaders in the organization understand it and, and support it and that you really are, are are ready to, to do some some organizational changes um, the market is is something that you should be aware of, of. and then they say that the, you, you should there are a lot of uh, solutions that are almost ready but still have some issues and you should be aware of how you buy them because if you buy as i mentioned before sensors from different uh, vendors then they might not work together and so on. So you need to think about it before you go to the market and, and you need to know what you ask for. And the data and data quality is, uh, yeah, it is of course always important, uh, but but it is also something to do with this. Uh, you need to be aware of how do you work with data afterwards after you collected it and how do you make sensor data work together with the other data that you have in the, the municipalities. Security and law, it's also, I mean, all of these are, are over uh, halfway. So, so I guess uh, there are some, there are many obstacles. But security and law is something. What are you actually? Um, how do you uh, prevent from being hacked? If you put out this new sensors in the city, you you have a new way to to, to be hacked and so on. So you really need to think about that as well. And the ethics and values are something that. of people at a museum um, and, and so on. And, and what, so what, how can you use this new technology? You really, really need to think about the ethics also in, in elderly, uh, the elderly area in, in private homes. Can you put up this sensor that, that, that look at the, the citizen all the time and then send an alarm if they, if they uh, fell or, or some, yeah. So, so there's, there's a lot of ethic questions in this as well. So that was uh, <laughs> the, the big challenges and uh, the status on IoT and then what are the challenges that we face. And then we are, uh, of course, uh, <laughs> looking at, so how do we improve this area, which is, uh, of course, the interesting thing and also the very difficult thing here. So what I want to mention here is um, that we have worked together with a lot of actors from, from the different sectors in Denmark <clears throat> to put up this uh, guide for sustainable digital transformation in Denmark. And uh, what it does is it's, it's the most important thing is that it put up these seven recommendations that we have uh, agreed on across the sectors in Denmark. So it's private, it's, it's public and it's like government and, and, and municipalities. And so all the way around have, have, uh, have agreed on these uh, seven recommendations that I will just uh, read for you. It's, number one is focus on data. Number two is built with interfaces. <clears throat> number three is secure a minimum of interoperability. Four is keep an open mind when choosing technology. Five, prioritize partnerships and ecosystems take, or six, take maturity and complexity into consideration, and seven, start small and think big. So <clears throat> with these uh, recommendation, and, and what I also guess is important is that we, we, we made a, a map of the, <clears throat> of the an, an actual map or a stakeholder map of the, of the people working in this field in Denmark. So we, we put all of them into a map and looked at the, so we have the, the government here and we have a, a lot of um, partnerships within some municipalities who does this, some, some do, uh, there's a OS2 IoT who is in a partnership between a lot of municipalities that make an IoT platform and there are um, <clears throat> open data. DK is it's also a, a partnership or an uh, association within a lot of where a lot of municipalities take part in, in presenting open data and so on. So we have a lot of 
people working within this field. And then we looked at, so from, from KL, local government Denmark, what should we then do in this? So, so we're not going to, to, to focus on everything, but we should have our take into this landscape. Um, so what we decided to do was a pretty narrow uh, uh, project that focus on these three things. So um, what, what we focus on are the IT architecture, infrastructure and data. So we, we, we uh, in this field, we look at waste management now and we're going to look at buildings and we're going to look at climate uh, and water and so on. And then we are going to <clears throat> look at the EU and, and I guess we, right now we work with some fireware data standards and then we translate them into Den Danish and we have a, dialogue with, with the Danish municipalities and the market in Denmark and ask, what if, if we use this, could you then uh, make use of this? Would that be good for you? And so on. And, and then we're trying to promote that standards in Denmark. <clears throat> so that is one of the things that we do on the IT architecture. Then we do it in collaboration with the market. So we work with, uh, with universities and, and the and, and the market very close together with the market and, and do things together with them. So one of the things that we are doing now is that we, we talk about roles within IoT. So what roles are there in the municipalities and what roles are there in the market? Uh, and then we look at how do, they, how do we work together? So, and, and, and when, when doing that, we can see there are different ways to make a collaboration with the market. So some of the collaborations is an end-to-end -end where you buy a, an end-to-end -end solution and then the municipalities doesn't do so much and in the other uh, direction there are municipalities that has a lot of uh, technical people uh, that work with them and then they don't they just need to buy some sensors maybe and then they build the whole infrastructure themselves so we we see maybe five or seven different ways that the collaboration between municipalities and the market can run and, and I guess that is uh, quite interesting. <clears throat> and then we have a network for Internet of Things, which is a network of people from the municipalities that uh, work with Internet of Things, where we do a lot of knowledge sharing and uh, yeah, talk with them and actually we put them together with the market. Uh, so we facilitate, facilitate that dialogue. And maybe the last thing I should mention is that we also look at the the Swedish um, Kale, or the, 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 the people in Sweden who does the same as Kale in Denmark, SKR, they are called, and they have this ref arc, which are uh, some principles for working with IoT that is also very focused on how do you collaborate with the market and so on. They have some very well thought principles that, that you should look into when, when working with IoT. And then together with Sweden, we are we are looking at how can we work use this in Denmark and also how could we bring this into EU and in other countries. Yeah, so I guess that was uh, my presentation and I hope there are some questions. Thanks, uh, Jakob. Well, uh, that's not the problem. There's a ton of questions, oh. <laughs> not only uh, in the uh, material here, but also in general, because this is this is so dense. This is so, I mean, there's so many issues. Just the things you put here. So there's the, the, the organizational network. There's, there's the whole regulatory sort of framework around that. And we didn't even touch on that. But thank you so much. And, and good to have you, Kathy, also with us. It's from sunny Lisbon, I presume. So um, Ray, over to you. So, so now we know what the cities need. <laughs> in order to serve the citizens, right? Wherever they are, urban or rural or rural, everyone needs it. I think, you know, wherever you go in the world, you can subscribe to some elements of this. So are the standards there? And if not, how do we get there? And then I'd invite, you know, uh, Kathy to sort of throw a little bit of uh, discussion at you after this. But Ray, so we have 15 minutes left, so we can have a little bit of, of Q&A uh, after that. But uh, I know it's incredibly difficult to to condense Ray. thanks very much martin and thanks to rena and san and all the team associated with osk and and uh, for for the invitation yeah my my name is ray walsh i'm a, a standards um uh developer i suppose with with the uh, with the um uh, 
the Research Center at ADAPT in Dublin City University, and I'm also Director of the European Observatory for ICT Standards. So to link in, uh, link in with what Jakob was saying in terms of like what's, what's, what supports are actually required and necessary to support standardization, one of the projects funded out of RISE in 2020 is Standard CT, and, and, and it's one that we're involved in ourselves. And, and, and the key takeaway here is that we have 3 million euro, which is provided to us by the European Commission via this, uh, this um, uh, funding. And we set up a grants platform and that platform allows people to apply for support if they want to engage in international standardization, because it's a very, very complex landscape to navigate and to get engaged in. So if you're involved in IoT or Digital Twin or Smart Cities, uh, and you want to know what the standards are in those areas and contribute to those standards, then you, you would probably need to be funded, particularly if you're a startup or an SME. Then uh, one way of doing that and su supporting European expert engagement is through this um, through this instrument. So we we provide a support mechanism where you can apply through various rolling calls or up as far as call six, which is open at the moment and closes on the 24th of January. And you can write a proposal and send it in via the Stanley CT website, which I'll put in the link, uh, a link in the chat uh, after we've done here. We also run as part, so that's the funding platform, which is a big chunk of what we do. Like, so it's a 4 million euro project, 3 million in grants, which is handed out. And the European Observatory for ICT Standards, which is the logo behind me, is the uh, is uh, the, um, the so I suppose the engine of, of the outputs, the deliverables from from a standard CT project in relation to the technical reports, so the landscape reports and the uh, the gap analysis for for standards internationally and. Um, through these technical working groups, we have loads of experts that are engaged uh, on the platform, and they help us in in, in identifying like what the uh, what the needs are of the industries and what what the stakeholder requirements are uh, in in relation to standardisation in IoT and smart cities and and data and 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 AI etc. And we have a very large community, as you can see there, uh, an active expert advisory group, like which, which is the great and the good. Lots of people uh, involved there from the European Commission perspective, uh, from uh, from uh, Digital SME Alliance. We have members from, from OESC uh, and uh, Etsy and Sensenlec, etc. So a large expert advisory group uh, associated with the project to support us in the work we're doing. Linkages with international uh, bodies, uh, standards bodies, uh, projects, uh, and, and various industry players, including OESC, can be seen here we can provide this information in more detail on this later but you can just look it up on the Stanley City website like or the slides will be prepared uh, later the outputs for the technical working groups uh, uh, and from the the, the funding platforms are, are many and and diverse but some of the key things are that our fellows that so the people who are awarded funding through the uh, online platform uh, so the, to the beneficiaries of this trip three million euro they are experts obviously in standardization and they are looking at smart cities and IOT and, and what are they, the needs for standards development in those spaces uh, and we write impact reports then based on their 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 contribution to that standards area to show that they're helping to develop new standards to make it easier for 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 users for cities for 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 companies for organizations to engage internationally using standardized approaches standardized sensors start standardized processing you know standardized vocabularies when talking about these technical areas so that these are a couple of the reports that have been that have been printed so far these are from the first two open calls so i mean uh, it includes about 57 different different experts uh, views of what of their their interaction with, with standards development um but there's more to come because we have other open calls obviously in the pipeline um and following through an analysis then our breakdown quite quickly of, of where those technical areas are and across which standards development organizations have been targeted. You can see the ISO, IEC and Etsy and Sensenlec are well represented there on the bar graph. And also in terms of the targeted the targeted um, uh, uh, to topics, you can see that the, it was IoT has been funded and 5G and, uh, and accessibility by CD, but AI was a big winner. Blockchain was a big winner. Cybersecurity is always a, uh, an important standardization task. So these are these are types of areas that get funded and um, 82 submitted applications and a total amount of, of nearly a million euro like out of those 82 applications, you know, that has been um, that have been received in, across these different four first uh, analysis of the first four open calls. Uh, these successful applicants are, are right across the board. You can see see people here that are like really senior people, like obviously like you know, like Jochen Friedrich and Francisca Medeiros. This is a head of delegation for for the for for Belgium in in um, in, in AI. Uh, senior leaders like you know at from the MSP, the multi stakeholder plan for ICT, ICT uh, rolling plan for standardization. 
Uh, and uh, right across, you can see most of these people, a lot of these people you will have seen in, in international standardization, Paolo Chip, Campo Gianni, there's, uh, I won't name them all because I don't have time. Uh, the other as another aspect of what, what's available to people to support them in engaging in international standardizations, we have this repository. And the repository there uh, has a list of, at this stage, we put thousands of standards, but I think we've we are yet to add the AI landscape report and the smart cities report standards that we've discovered, uh, add them to this repository. But it's a searchable database where you can find out about what, what type of standards are, are, are there. Like we can search by, by topic area, uh, uh, by domain, or you can search by technology. And you can find out more information about how to engage in standardization based on that. Uh, the technology leadership in terms of the technical working groups is, is also um, uh, very impressive. So we've, we've a lot of uh, standards leaders uh, from, the, in, from uh, uh, right across the, the ICT emerging technology standards landscape who are engaged with us. And these are the, the, the people who lead the technical working groups and, and do the heavy lifting when it comes to generating reports for the European Commission and for the, the uh, stand ICT uh, stakeholders. We run a, a, a status overview of where we are at any point in time uh, within our deliverables. And at the moment, we have uh, published two landscape reports on AI and, and smart cities with, with a lot of help from OSC in the smart cities. And a shout out to uh, Eddie Hartog in particular, like uh, and Max Lamska. But Eddie was was pivotal in, 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 in supporting us in terms of signing signing the uh, uh, the uh, forward for the smart cities report. And I know Eddie is, uh, is, uh, is, has been involved with, with CXC here as well with OSC. Um, so we've two published and we have a few more that are very close to publishing, close in trusted information and, and, digi and uh, digital twin uh, and more in the pipelines, uh, as, as you can see here. Uh, this is a snapshot of, of what's been what's been published to date in terms of the uh, the actual reports that were, were sent to the European Commission. We have a standards academy for education and training led by Brian McAuliffe from from uh, um, NEC and also the he's the JTC one uh, so ISO IEC uh, liaison to the European Commission. But a great collection of, of European experts like I me. Mean, we we have several hundred people who are actively engaged with the with the European Observatory for ICT standards, helping us to produce outputs uh, on a regular basis. And the standards academy then is going to provide um, a, a training training exercise or training outputs deliverables like you know for, for uh, various stakeholders um, as we continue through the project working in synergy with many projects on we just we recently established a a, a new technical working group on ontologies uh, with, with Etsy and Sarif uh, engagement as well and Digital Twin Consortium, DTC, which is a, a, a part of the Open Management Group. And uh, we, we continue to expand our, our linkages with, with the uh, European and international standards uh, um, uh, ecosystems. Uh, we also run uh, expert engagement, like, you know, to promote other areas. And one of the things is we were trying to support is women uh, experts engaging in, in international standardization. And we have an upcoming seminar on that, which you can find information about on the website. We run these web regular walk and talk type seminars, which are, which are advertised on the site as well. Uh, and uh, there's a snapshot you can see there where Eddie has helped to, to, to help us with the smart cities uh, work with John Myers and, and other experts in relation to uh, um, smart cities and, and OSQ were, 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 were uh, obviously very, very helpful in terms of reviewing that for the European Commission as well. As I said, we're on the sixth open call, so money is the thing that people hear usually when we talk about these things in relation to how, how can we get support, so we have a funding mechanism. It's open, just contact us through the website uh, or join in to find out what's happening in terms of the webinars on the Walk and Talk Women in ICT Standards webinars or uh, the Digital Twins or Smart Cities webinars that we run on a regular basis as well. So that's a, a quiz and stop store, a tour of, of what's going on. And uh, hopefully there's time now for some uh, questions. <laughs> that's that's brilliant, Ray. The world of standards in seven minutes. Thank you so much. Who could do it if not you? <clears throat> so may, may I ask all of you to turn on your cameras? And and there's always already been a lot of discussion. You know, everything from oh, but 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 Jakob, you talked about um, you know some problems in, in you know getting the data in a proper way from a to b so that you can you can actually deliver service on top of it we actually had several sessions on that so including on the you know um the guys from helsinki and last two discussing how how is that so so there's there's a big discussion about so who can be the intermediaries here so maybe i'll just hand it over to you kathy but 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 you know could could you reflect on so who are there to help bridge this gap? And Kathy, if you would just, you know, say, hi, I'm Kathy and where I'm from so that, that we all know. So 
Yeah, so hi, uh, my apologies for being a bit late this morning. I'm, I'm Cathy Mulligan. I'm a professor of computer science at the Instituto Superior Tecnico in uh, Lisbon. I've just moved there. Uh, and we've got a lab that's set up now. I'm leading a lab here for um, uh, basically uh, decentralization for social good and sustainability. I've uh, been working with standards for, for many, many years. Um, and uh, yeah, I was previously involved uh, quite a bit with uh, OESC. So it's really exciting to see how things have uh, developed and, and moved on. I, I'm gonna ask a difficult question if I might, um, Martin, actually. So there was a great question about intermediaries and I put a little bit of an answer into the chat, but I'm gonna ask a very difficult question. So um, I, I started in standards when I was working in industry. I was in, you know, things like 3GPP and stuff like that. So, so in some of the sort of partnership projects that uh, develop things for standards. Um, and that was years ago. And then in IoT, I've been sort of involved in these kind of spaces since about probably about 2014. Question. For the last eight years, I've heard the same thing, which is that business models are one of the biggest problems. If we haven't solved the business model problem over the last eight years, are we doing the right type of standardization? And if so, great, how do we fix the business model? But if we're not, what, what is this type of standardization? What needs to change in order to actually fully deliver on the, the benefits of these technologies? So I hope that's not a question for me because it's a tough one. Jakob, do you want to go first? I mean, the municipalities, they invest, invest, invest. So there's money, if you can say it like that. Maybe not for the innovation, but but I mean, so. And as I, I would agree, that is a very difficult question and I wish I could answer it. But, but, but one answer from, from, my, from my perspective is that how we work now is that we look a lot on, on technologies. So I am the IoT man and I have a colleague who work with with uh, artificial intelligence and so on. But I think we, we're talking about changing that so that we, uh, we are agnostic towards the technologies, which is also one of the recommendations. And, and then look at what challenges are there. So we have maybe these 10 huge challenges that municipalities could face in Denmark. And what are then the, the best solution right now on, on this challenge and what are the best on other challenges? So that is the way we, we want to to, to go uh, in, in regard to the, 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 the business model. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, that's not the, the solution, but that is what, what we are going to do now. <clears throat> Ray, what about you? I mean, so yes, we can, we can continue to pop out standards, but, but you know, what then? <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> Yeah, pop out standards. That's a good way of describing it. Uh, uh, they don't look. Uh, unfortunately, they don't just pop out. Like there's a lot. Of, it takes like years to actually develop an international standard because depending on on, on the agency you're working with, and um, the standards are are globally accepted best practice, which means that they're they are uh, created through international consensus, which means you have to get the agreement of national bodies worldwide. And um, so it takes a while to to actually generate them. As as for the, to being relevant to business cases, like well, I mean the uh, the actors within standardization are our businesses like you know so we have the great and the good of international businesses small medium um, and startups and multinationals involved in international standardization so usually they put forward their business cases um, as we're developing the, the, the standards and the standards go through obviously great, a great amount of revision as in, in their development in terms of going from working drafts to, to committee to committee drafts you know to uh, final uh, uh, draft international standardization before they get published as international standards and get ratified by by the national body so a lot of effort goes goes into them and we would hope that the businesses because they are engaging are putting the right business cases forward for standardization um uh uh, but if, if that's not the case, you know, and, and I can see that that has in, in different areas, like we have different types of engagement uh, and uh, we need to encourage businesses to engage in international standardization because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's part of the innovation life cycle and it requires, uh, uh, well, it, it supports, shall we say, uh, scaling in terms of globalization. It gives you access to greater markets, you know, you can, you can, you can trade across international boundaries um, by adopting you know, globally accepted standardized, standardized techniques services, tools, and technologies. Yeah, I mean, I agree that that helps with, for example, the ITU. So, you know, the telecommunications industry already has an extremely well-established business model. Um, and that's how, you know, you move into the standards. 
Um, but, but then I wonder for small things like IoT and local authorities, you know, how do we, how do we deliver that scale in a way that is actually uh, financially viable? Um, so, um, and how do we embed those into the standard? They should be embedded into the standard up front, right? So, I'm um, sorry, but, just, yeah. it's, we had this question and we've been having it for over a decade now. <laughs> so so could I just- that. Sorry about that. Could I, I, yeah, yeah. Difficult questions, yeah. Could I just make a quick interjection um, here? There are two things. First, standards themselves help with the business model because once you get an agreed standard that hopefully cities can say, yes, we want, to, uh, we want to procure according to that standard. It makes it much easier for many companies and that to see their scale here. And it makes it, it so done properly, standards work can really help underpin um, the business model to get things moving. Uh, the other thing though is, you're quite right, this is a big gap. One of the great things that BSI did um, in the early days of smart city standardization, we had a, an event where we actually had funders along as well, we had people from the European Investment Bank, from other in, uh, other banks, actually real banks there. And, and I think um, that was a one-off, unfortunately. I think it would be really helpful to understand what, if you like, what indicators, what things um, people who are looking at investing um, in some of these things need to, 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 to see in place so that they can be confident that it's worth their putting their their money into it. And I think if, if we could start a dialogue with uh, those sort of, all the different levels of investment from the invest, the European Investment Bank, World Bank, and so on down to angel investors and, and understand what evidence we need to provide about uh, the viability of, of, of these techniques, I think then that would be a very useful thing to fit back, fill, uh, pull, bring back into the standards development process. Thanks. Yeah, so oh. could we just let, let's let's just finish on one final question. Sorry, Martin, because I know we've got to. No, no, please. I, I would just say let let's let's uh, round it off and and, yeah. and please continue in the Q and A because it, it will continue. So so when we wrap this up and we'll have many more sessions. But but you've been in this here for for I was going to say decades. Uh, not you, Jakob, <laughs> but the others. So so please. I mean, one final round and we need to give it all. But the, it continues, Kathy. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, so, you know, moving on to another question, the fantastic question here in the Q&A, you know, is there somewhere an initiative to translate standards um, into, you know, more usable practical guidelines for smaller cities and smaller businesses? So maybe we finish on that question because I think it's a fantastic one. Yeah, I can well, pick, I, I, pick up on that one uh, as a starting point anyway. So standards like I mean, tend to be the bed, be a, a foundational work. Uh, so they tend to be the bedrock for uh, certification uh, legislation and, and uh, um, other uh, uh, instruments that, that governments and, um, and region, regional uh, jurisdictions like, like the European Commission can use. Uh, so yes, absolutely. So by, by, by adoption of international standardization, then that creates mechanisms, tools and technologies, uh, instruments that can, that can be used at the local level and um, by SMEs, by cities, by uh, you know, they, but uh, by stakeholders. So I mean, cities can be can be looked at as a stakeholder as well. So yes, absolutely, that that's that's what the whole process of adoption uh, from from um, global standardization out to Europeans to international bodies does. It gives cities a, a mechanism, like you know, to uh, to um, uh, to to embed the technologies in in their in their business practices and and, and have that level of confidence in them as well. Uh, just a quick thing, we can't stop without mentioning the MIMS because one of the key points about the MIMS is to take the key requirements of standards uh, uh, that, that smaller and medium sized cities can immediately start to uh, implement and package them up to make it that, that easy. The other, the other thing though is standards bodies, we need to be much better at, the, at not only publishing standards but also implementation guides. Uh, that's beginning but we need to do more of it and we need to be better, be better at it. Thank yeah, you. maybe. Yeah, thanks. Let's Patrick. put that over to, to Jacob oh, because Jacob. I think that's, that's very much uh, <laughs> yeah. what you're trying to do. And just have one uh, take on this. I, from my point of view, there are a, a gap between people working with standards and, and other people in the municipality. So there are some digital people and so on. And a part of these are the IT architecture people and the people who knows about standards. And I think there, that is an issue that these are two. <laughs> they don't always talk so good together. And I think what we try to do on the IoT project is to, to, to communicate it in different ways than just the standard. So it's also to how do we 
do we make it interesting for the people who doesn't think standards and IT infrastructure, uh, IT architecture, and so on? So, so to make a bridge between these two kind of people. And just and just finally as well, I mean, standards have to be technology agnostic as well. To, to, to not technology agnostic, but they're vendor agnostic, uh, so that uh, you're trying to create international uh, mechanisms that will work, like you know, so architectures and frameworks and platforms that will work without specifically tying in any particular one vendor's uh, um, product or service. Thanks, right. I, I think I'm I'm gonna uh, have the the chair's privilege of ending the ever you know, evolving discussion here and, and thank you guys, but please, I mean, we, the channel stays open, use the Q&A, there'll be many more sessions, not just, you know, at this festival, but also uh, the, the coming ones. Thank you so much, Jakob, for, for, you know, giving us the view from the, the city side and not just one, but actually a lot. And thank you also, can I say, for taking the time also to leaning in to bridge this gap. I think this is exactly it. Ray, uh, thanks for, for joining and, and sharing uh, your, your very concrete uh, contributions to closing the gap as well. Kathy also for uh, jumping in and uh, as we can see also in the comments, uh, adding your experience uh, and, and uh, perspective. So thank you so much. And uh, we lay our no now over to some of the actually market actors who deliberately and consciously are going into closing this gap. So thank you so much.